Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing our Let's Talk Lore series on the military ranks and titles with Episode 3, talking about the Tier 4 Generals. So previously we covered everything from Tier 1 to Tier 3, and in Tier 4 today we're going to first introduce a subgroup that belongs to what's known as the Imperial Army, or Jinjun. Now within the Imperial Army, there are multiple ranks that are Tier 4 ranks, Previously in Tier 3, we talked about something called Zhonglingjun, or the General of the Center, and that's the Tier 3 General that's in charge of the overall Imperial Army. Now these Generals listed here and Lieutenants are Tier 4 Generals within the Imperial Army that works under Zhonglingjun, or the Tier 3 General who will be their boss. So first off, we have two ranks, which carries the title of a General, or Jiangjun, and they are Wu Wei Jiangjun and Hu Jun Jiangjun which roughly translate to General of the Martial Guards and General of the Army Guards. And aside from these two general positions, what constitute majority of the Imperial Army's auxiliary units, or units that function kind of in assistance of the centralized force that's residing inside the capital, are these lieutenants or Xiao Wei. And in the early stages of the Han Dynasty, there were actually eight of these positions set up, but by the time we reach the later Eastern Han Dynasty and into the Three Kingdoms, only five such positions are preserved, and they're called Tunqi Lieutenant, Yueqi Lieutenant, Bu Bing Lieutenant, Changshui Lieutenant, and Shu Sheng Lieutenant. So these army groups, lieutenants, have a very set number of troops within them. Each of these lieutenants command exactly 700 men, and they are stationed at key locations around the capital. And these five collectively are often called the five battalions of the Imperial Army. And majority of this force is cavalry. Three of these five are cavalry units, and they are the Tunqi, Yueqi, and Changshui. So the first one, second one, and the fourth one. Now Tunqi is your typical heavy shot cavalry. Yueqi are your horseback archers. Changshui is actually the name of a location. And this is a key location in the northwest of the capital. And they're just a group of cavalry that mainly features nomadic cavalry that are working for the Han government. And they're stationed out here on the fringes of the capital. So it's kind of location-based naming system here. And then Bu Bing Lieutenant. Bu Bing actually means infantry. So this is the infantry lieutenant. They're most likely the heavy armor infantry unit for the battalions. And finally, Shu Sheng Lieutenants are your archery. Now these archers are most likely infantry archers, and the naming convention Shu means to shoot, which reflects that they are archer units, and Sheng means sound. So this is a praise that you can give to archers by telling them they are Shu Sheng, means they can fire their arrows accurately, responding to only sound and not even sight. So this is an elite archer unit that's picked out for the Imperial Army. So these Seven positions here are all tier 4 positions that belongs to the Imperial Army. And then continuing, we're going back to our miscellaneous named generals, which we talked about in our last series, where we talked about how many of these general names were kind of made up uh, to reflect a specific incident or event, and then they're given this title and sent out. Well, some of them are more structured, and this kind of belongs in that group, as we have five sets of Wei Wu. Now, Wei means kind of respect and morale of an army, and Wu kind of means martial or military in general. So these are kind of generic terms, and then there's five pairs of these. As you can see, you have Jian Wei, Jian Wu, and then you have Zhen Wei, Zhen Wu, Fen Wei, Fen Wu, Yang Wei, Yang Wu, Guang Wei, Guang Wu. And the Wei version are called the Wu Wei Jiangjun, or the five Wei Jiangjun, and there's also Wu Wu Jiangjun. But these are pretty generic terms, and they're given out quite often. They kind of seem like sets, but these are never really documented to be sets. And these titles are usually accompanied to administrative offices. So if you're going to a place on the frontiers where it's unrest and you're given the position of administrator or Tai Wei, they might throw you a general title as well, and it's usually one of these. So you could become maybe the administrator of Anding. And at the same time, they'll make you a Guangwu Jiangjun, and you'll be given an army to go to that fringe commandery to kind of take care of the unrest. So the administrative role is more of a civil role, and at the same time, they will attach one of these miscellaneous name sets to you to give you a military role as well as you're given command of an army. 
And then finally, on the right, you have four that's kind of more detailed. You have Ning Shuo Jiangjun, which is bringing peace to the north. Shuo is the same term as in Shuofang, which is the northern、uh, commandery in the Bin province. And then you have Zuo Ji Shuo Jiangjun and Yu Ji Shuo Jiangjun. Now Ji Shuo means scouts or rangers. They're scout archers. And Zuo means left, and Yu means right. So kind of like the general of the left and general of the right. This is more of、uh, rangers left unit and rangers right unit, and there's a general title attached to it. And lastly, you have Qiang Nu Jiangjun, which is generals of the heavy crossbowmen. So the last three are kind of range unit army general titles, and then you have a location one, and then you have the huge set of Wu Wei. For five sets, and that makes up all the miscellaneous name generals for tier four titles. Now these tiers obviously are just positional rank and also deals with your salary, but in reality, you know, it kind of just functions as a title given to you at whatever time they decide to assign one to you. And some of the more famous ones that are、uh, related to this time period, we have Ma Dai, who worked for the Kingdom of Shu Han, and he was Jian Wei Jiangjun. And then you also have another character from the Shu Han Kingdom in Liu Zhang, who actually surrendered Chengdu to Liu Bei, and he was given a general title after he surrendered by Liu Bei to kind of make up for the fact that you stole all his land, and he was given the title of Zhen Wei Jiangjun. Now the word in parentheses here that we showed earlier, we didn't really talk about it, but basically we're translating the first term because Wei and Wu are kind of just generic, and then Zhen here means to brace, and then Jian means to build. And then going forward, we have Fen Wei Jiangjun. So Fen Wei Jiangjun,、uh, there was a lot of characters with this title, but one of the most famous ones actually Lu Bu. When he was working under、uh, Dong Zhuo, he wasn't given this title, but after he killed Dong Zhuo, they gifted this title to him so that he has a much higher rank. He worked for titles all his life, you know, murdering these adopted fathers that he called, and、uh, switching sides often. And lastly, you had Fen Wu Jiangjun. This is more of a logistic or Army supervisor role, and Cao Cao had this for the coalition that was against Dong Zhuo, where Yuan Shao kind of bestowed this title on him. Not a big deal. A lot of these titles don't carry a lot of weight.、Uh, they're basically thrown around miscellaneously,、uh, as their name suggests. And then moving down to other categories of Tier Four, you have non-general titles. General is a pretty high rank, you know, as General Jiangjun. Moving down, we have what's called Zhonglang Jiang. Which I roughly translate to captains, but Zhonglang Jiang really doesn't have a you know an English equivalent. But I think going down below a couple tiers, we have the captains, which I'm gonna just call Zhonglang Jiang. And then here we see different sets. You have Dong Nan Xi Bei or the East, South, West, and North. Then like the generals, you have some miscellaneous titles like Zhen Wei, brace for the morale; Jian Yi, build duty; Feng Yi, follow your duty. Ping Lu, pacify the nomads, and then you have a few that's more detailed. Dian Jun Zhonglang Jiang is the ceremonial army that does rituals in the capital. Fu Jun Zhonglang Jiang is the leader of the prince's army or the heir's army, and then Wu Wei Zhonglang Jiang is just the armed guards of the capital. Si Jin Zhonglang Jiang is in charge of ironwork. Actually, he's in charge more of the logistic nature of mining for iron wars. Setting up the ironworks industry, crafting weapons, tools for the civilians and the army, and then you have positions like Silu Zhongnan Jiang. Silu is the capital province where the capital resides in, so it's kind of an overarching、uh, commander here, a captain within the capital province. And then you have Hu Xiongnu Zhongnan Jiang, which is the captain that safeguards the Xiongnu. And then you have. Shuai Shan Zhongnan Jiang and Shuai Shan is actually a kingdom out west as well. So both the last two are slightly higher position captains that's responsible for a certain nomadic tribe that they're assigned to. They could be sent out as ambassadors during peacetime with a small armed force, or they could be on the frontier leading an army holding them back during wartime. And then some of the characters that had these positions, there's so many different names for Zhongnan Jiang. I'm not going to list all of them. But you can see from each kingdom, everyone had to start somewhere. No one became a general or a prime minister or a da du du right away. They had to work their way up. And Cao Pi held the position of Wu Guan Zhongnan Jiang when he was not named the heir, but still working his way through the courts. And then you have Zhuge Liang, who was Jun Shi Zhongnan Jiang, or the army advisor captain. You know, it's a random title given to himself to highlight the fact that he was 
、uh, army advisor, and he had the rank of captain. And then Zhou Yu also had a Zhong Langjiang title before he was made Da Dudu before the Battle of Chibi as well. So these are just slightly lower tier level ranks, but they still belong in general to tier four, even though they're gonna rank a little bit lower than all the general titles we've been talking about. And then another tier below them is what's called Xiao Wei. Xiao Wei is lieutenants here, and you have different regional Xiao Wei. And some of these have shown up in our previous lore series about the fall of the Han, and we talked about ones like Hu Qiang Xiao Wei, which is the lieutenant that's sent out to the Qiang region to take care of that、uh, situation, whether it's rebellion or just peaceful、uh, working out with different tribes. So most of these are. Very heavy location base. You see the second and third group. Hu Qiang is talking about the Qiang region. Hu Dong Qiang is talking specifically about the Eastern Qiang region. And then you have the Hu Wu Huan, which talks about Wu Huan tribe from the north, same as Xianbei tribe. And then you have the Xiyu Xiao Wei. Xiyu is the Western territory, the long stretch of land going into the Gobi Desert through the Xihe Corridor, and that whole region dealing with trades on the Silk Road. So that's kind of the lieutenant that was sent out there. And then you had one dealing with, in general, the Western Nomads, and then you have one dealing with the Eastern Nomads. And then on the left side, you have some more、uh, detailed ones. Seems like random naming: Jian Zhong to build loyalty. Tao Kou to eliminate the bandits, Ping Lu to pacify the nomads, and the most interesting one here is actually the first one, which is actually Wu Ji Xiao Wei. Now Wu Ji are individual terms that correspond to a number, and in the Chinese language, they are terms like Jia Yi Bing Ding, which kind of correlate to one, two, three, four, and the first ten characters that correspond to one through ten are often used by the military to correspond to a location. Kind of how in modern day warfare we say like twelve o'clock for north, you had the very similar effect back then, but there is only ten words and they used it for the general eight directions. So the north, south, east, west, and also you had northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast, and there's only eight. So there's two characters that's left behind and not assigned a certain location or direction, and that's Wu Ji over here. And so, what did they do with these two characters? They combined them and gave them a lieutenant title. And this army group was basically designed to camp everywhere and always be on the move, kind of like a nomadic reserve force that goes around and help different regions. And this kind of made sense because since they're characters that are assigned no directions, they have no directions. So they're allowed to roam freely and encamp anywhere they want, and kind of. Uh, help out different regions when needs arrive. So all these different titles, from lieutenants, captains to certain generals and certain ranks within the Imperial Army, kind of covers all of the tier four. We'll be moving on to tier five and tier six, which are a little bit less condensed than this one, and we'll do one episode on that, and then we'll do also do one episode on non-ranking setup of the army, like. What's the smallest unit in the Han army? How many of such unit goes to the next tier? Like, how would you have a squad, a battalion, and so forth? And that's going to wrap up this series. And hopefully, we can move on next week to kick off our Sun Jian lore series. So, hope you guys enjoy this one, and we'll see you all next time. Bye.